Sorry guys, give me a moment. Just trying to get this thing working. Uh, how do I do presentation? Right? Okay, so we're gonna keep this. Okay, uh, I just keep this. Yeah, good. Okay, should do this. All right, guys. Uh, before I continue, uh, um, just want to check: is it too cold in the room? Okay, I think some of you are nodding. Okay, okay. <laughs> so let me just fix the aircon. It will be just very quickly. I just bring it up to twenty, yeah, twenty six. Yeah, so we'll just warm up a little bit. Okay. All right. Then uh, second thing, anyone needs a toilet break? Okay, just in case. Okay, just in case anyone wants a toilet break and you don't know where the toilet is, um, you go down, the, the go down the stairs. Right, you make a left turn. There's a small little door. So you pass through the door. It's not locked. Go through the door. You turn on the right side. From the outside, there's a toilet on that, that side. All right. So just to let you guys know, in case you want to rush for the toilet. Yeah. Okay. So um, my name is Alvin. Uh, my sharing won't be anything that is extremely uh, technical. Not like what Meng Lu has did. I can tell that a lot of work has gone in. She's prepared a lot um, of uh, materials to share with us. Uh, but today, I think uh, my talk is a lot more about, you know, the way how we do things here at uh, Digital Ventures, um, what I have learned and like you know this is the kind of um, I would say the methodology that we have used right somewhat uh, for us to you know start off and also to explore the kind of like uh, potential venture uh, businesses right uh, that we can build and you know a result of this are you know all the wonderful businesses that you see that we have done some of which you might have seen the names like OVO Affinity. So it's the same methodology. So I'm just sharing with you. you know, take it with you however you want it. Uh, any questions, I will help to answer it. All right. So uh, let me just kick this off. Right. So I think one thing, right, is that, um, you know, far too many of us, you know, focus a lot on building the perfect product, right? Trying to perfect our code, trying to make sure we know everything about the market, you know, we know everything about the problem or the solution, you know, before we actually decide to launch it. And it will probably take a long time, one year, two years, how many number of years you need, you know, to get that done. And I think this uh, is very true because people will always say that perfection, you know, is the enemy of progress. And I'm not too sure if you guys have seen this uh, company that came up on the news not too long ago, maybe two weeks back. It's, uh, you know, this company is called Aqua, it's based in Singapore. Hope no one's from Aqua, but they've been doing this product for like the last four years and a couple of hundred plus of companies with I think total in $20 million of funding and four years, no product to show, completely failed to launch. And I think it was in the news. That's why, you know, people were like surprised. $20 million, no real product. So um, yeah, I think that's the, you know, the lesson to learn here. So what can we, why, why is this happening? You know, the complete failure can be avoided by, you know, trying to learn early on and also doing the cost corrections. That's what I'm trying to, you know, share with you. Why we need to avoid all these complete failures. The top reason for failures, right, are typically because um, there's no product market fit, which is very clear with Aqua, right? Like, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on. But as long as you never launch it, you never really learn from the market. That's one. And secondly, another top reason for failure is usually like poor understanding of the customers or the business. The moment you never launch it, you never learn anything. No, always back to the same thing. So I think really like what I'm trying to drive home is that the prototyping leads to a bit of testing as the moment you launch it. You're definitely going to fail along the way. But that whole idea, right, is so that you can tweak that approach. You know, whatever you have figured out at the start, your assumptions might be wrong. You go back to the drawing board, you try it again. Right. This is really like kind of like the cycle that we always go through, you know, to help us to maximize uh, our learning. So you take like small little steps and make small little failures along the way. All right. So on a very particular, let me just maybe explain a little bit more. So just to add more context, I know it's a wall of words here, but look at me. So I'll slowly explain to you. All right. So on a very particular digital ventures venture, okay, we face a, a very specific challenge. Right, so just for context, I think some of you might have heard. Uh, we have short projects and long projects. So the short projects right, are things like what we call the innovation and validation. So it's kind of like we take 10 weeks, uh, one of our clients will come to us and say that, hey, we've got a big problem. Um, we think that there might be an opportunity somewhere for us to start a business, but they don't really know how. 
So they come to us, right? They give us 10 weeks. We tell them, okay, we're going to help you figure out if there's an opportunity right here. All right? So that is a validation project. That's the cups of it. Help them figure out if there's a real business uh, in that area. So it takes us 10 weeks. This particular client, uh, I can only say that they are an operator of job portals. They have many, many job portals. All right? So that's kind of like our main business. All right? So this client wants to expand market share in Asia, this part of the world, and they are keen to reuse what they have been doing back in their home country. Right? So they think that it's a good idea, they just want to you know, just kind of like transplant it here into this part of the world. So there are three main complications with this problem. So firstly, the platform, what we see right, is that it's not currently built for Asia. And uh, for them to build the features right, to meet these needs, right, it is actually going to be a very big undertaking. That's number one. So number two, right? Um, they're actually not too sure how big actually the market is. So for them, right, it's kind of like an internal thing, right? They've been like trying to figure this thing out. They're doing surveys, but they're not 100% sure. And they don't know where to attack as well. Because when you talk about jobs, it's big, right? So when you talk about job portals, we've got white collar, blue collar, I don't know, mixed color collar or whatever. So it's really kind of like tricky, right? So it's impossible to make that real judgment, right? On like, okay, let's attack this and how much time we're going to spend to build that thing. So it's really tricky. That number, complication number two. So number three, right? As you guys know, job portals is also kind of like a two-sided marketplace. You need to have the job uh, uh, post, and you need the person to uh, the job seeker, you know, to you know find a job. Then you can put them together. So they don't really know where to start first. Like, do we do this or oh shit? Oh, let me see. Do this first. Get the screen up. Yeah. So they're not too sure which one to start with first. So so far, right, what we know is that it has taken the client more than one year to figure this out. Right. We were surprised. We went in there and they were like, ask them, so how long have you guys been you know, knocking at this problem? They said, last one year, no results. Okay, they were like, okay, fine, this is probably going to be very difficult. So for us, right, the obvious way would have taken forever. Right? So we will probably have to take a super long time to like, study, design, and then like, build something and launch it to get an outcome. So it's pretty standard, right? I think you guys probably have seen this. It's like, okay, we're gonna spend like, uh, like next three, four months, let's do all the research, blah, 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 go through all the customer service, let me call up customers, or like, I'm gonna put like panel, uh, customer, well, panel, sorry, like uh, focus groups, you guys know, focus groups. Like, okay, focus group one, two, three, do all this, okay? Then it's gonna take like, I don't know how many research. Then after that, we're gonna do, okay, we've got all those results, let's go and do the next round of uh, design. So like, okay, let's go and design all this, we've got the screens, we've got this and that, we go test the designs, okay, not super good, blah, blah, keep doing again, right? So it's gonna be here. But it's still not launching, you know, we're still designing stuff. It's probably like all screens only. We don't really have the actual stuff. So once we have the actual stuff, right, then someone will like, okay, let us go and like translate all this into real actual features. They were like, okay, we're gonna have feature one. Uh, hi, okay, just explain, the higher is the, job hire a seeker as a job seeker so like hire a uh, feature we have this then seeker we have this then we're like okay let's build all this you know we don't know how long it's gonna take maybe it's gonna take one year two years all right gonna build all this and then finally launch boom then get the feedback you know that's the usual way of like how we know big corporates uh, work right but actually right the idea is that uh, we realize it is possible to provide a very convincing experience, right? With way fewer stories than we thought. So one way to do that actually, right? You remember what I said, right? We just do small little prototypes. Um, try to figure out what exactly is the real, like important features that we need to put out there, right? So just do the first base level of research. You know, you know like do the minimum and try to learn 80%, like the 80-20 rule. Like do a little bit to try to find out as much as you can because everything else is gonna be diminishing returns. So focus on that. Do the basic one first. Then just let's do the first round of design. You know, put it out there, get some real feedback. Maybe it's good enough, maybe it's not good enough. Who knows? Until it gets into the hands of the customers, they tell us what it is. Right? So then we just move on here with the design, with the most basic features, one and two. Later I'll show you what is it. So one and two, like maybe it's just a couple. You don't have to do everything. Let's just do a couple of those important ones. Let's launch it and get the feedback, right? So that's kind of like the approach that we did. So with this approach in mind, oh crap, sorry, it's in different, let me jump the order. So actually it came down, right, to really these core features based on that mindset that we had. So on the higher side, right, it's actually really simple. All they really need to do, right, is I need a way to post my job, right? I need to see who is the one that uh, applied for my job, which is the job seekers profile, and I need a way to contact them. That's really, really super basic job portal. Then for our platform, right, uh, as an operator of the platform, what I really need, right, is just a way to edit maybe the job post, edit the job seeker profile, you know, have a way to capture, you know, interest in the job, 
the way to capture the interest uh, in a job seeker. So be like, you know, right, two-sided. If I'm interested in a job, I can capture the interest, the other side. So, you know, I need a way to make sure they're interested in each other and how I capture that. <clears throat> I need a way to match the job by parameters. So maybe they have like uh, looking for someone with an education level or something, something. Then the, the job profile is someone of a certain education level, something, something. So we're going to match them by certain parameters. We need a way to match them by a uh, distance. So like, for example, you don't want to find a job that is like, I don't know, five hours away. You want to find something that's close to you, right? So then we need a way to do this. And finally, we need a way to notify um, the matches between uh, the job seekers and job hires. So it's really simple. Um, this part here is just a mirror of that. So I just need a way to register my profile as a job seeker. I need to see what the job is about, and I need a way to contact the uh, job hirer. Right? This part's clear. Huh? So actually, it's really super simple. What we needed, we realized we didn't need like all bunch of all the features. So then we were thinking, right? Okay, so what's the easiest way to do all this? Because we don't have a bunch of time. We got ten weeks, right? And actually, when it came down to figuring this all out, we only have five weeks left. Cause we already first spent the first five weeks figuring out the commercials, figure out the the, the interviews, you know, figure out like what are the initial designs and all that already. So then we only have the last five weeks. But we cannot spend five weeks to do this, right? Cause as a company that is paid to give solutions, we also need to present them, right? So the last week you need to spend on presentation. So actually we technically, right, only have like less than four weeks. And then the four weeks is like super tight, right? Because people are going on holidays and all that. So effectively only kind of like have like maybe two or three weeks. So then we're thinking, okay, so what's the really, really simplest way to do this? So it turns out, right, that actually, right, you can kind of like get away with this, right, in many, many ways. So the higher feature, okay, I need a way to post my job. I mean, frankly, you're just really collecting information, right? So actually, you just need a form. Okay, simple form. Lah. Okay, then I need to see the job seeker profile. Okay, I need a really simple dynamic HTML page. Maybe some of you guys already start to have the solution in your head. Okay, so then, uh, okay, that's something we just keep first. Uh, so the platform features, right? You see, I need a way to edit job posts. I need a way to edit job seeker. I need to like capture interest. I need a spreadsheet, maybe with an API so I can just update. So it's like really simple. Maybe you guys have something here as well. I need a way to match jobs. It's maybe a script. I need a way to match job by distance. Uh, some geo coding service. Okay, then uh, I need a way to notify matches. This one uh, quite funny. I was just saying, why don't we get an intern to just send WhatsApp messages? So that's one way. <laughs> that's actually one way. So I'm thinking, yeah, we can get that working. There's like the same thing here, some form and some event. So actually before I go into the actual solution, right, I'm just curious, right? Uh, when we were talking about forms, right? Do you guys have any solutions that pop into your head? Like we just need a form. What are you guys were thinking of? Okay, Google Forms, okay, okay. Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, Google Forms. Something else apart from Google Forms? Okay, okay, type form, okay, cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, nice. Okay, then um, let's say we need um, something like a spreadsheet with API. Very obvious, edible, okay, good, 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 okay. Then um, uh, script, uh, okay, uh, this one everyone knows, uh, you all can write scripts, no problem. Um, dynamic HTML page, okay, okay, Jamstack, okay, Notion, anything else? WordPress, WordPress, okay, okay, yeah, GitHub pages, yeah, GitHub pages, as well. okay, cool, okay, cool, all right. So, actually, right, that's kind of what we really landed on. So, let me see my next page. No, nope, sorry. Okay, then jump back. So actually, this was kind of like the grand plan. Uh. So you all kind of like got land most of it right already. So let's ignore the first side here. We don't really need to see the first side. But actually, the form, right, eventually you went a type form. So it's really simple. We just needed like a type form that has APIs, and we just need this to go into a database. So the database that we selected, right, in hindsight, we should have done Airtable, uh, which was a lot more easier. But uh, what we went with was with Google Sheets. Then we realized that actually Google Sheets kind of have got everything you wanted. They have geocoding services, which is already there for free. You, uh, we also have like the uh, like image host thing, like, you know, it's not real, right? But you can actually use Google Drive to host. You need to hack it a little bit, so that works as well. Then uh, you need to run scripts, right? So you can actually run scripts in the Google App Scripts. So it's like very simple. Then you can expose this as a JSON API, okay? Then after that, you need um, the pages, right? So we're saying we did, you technically only need two pages, one uh, job posting page, and what's the other one? Job. Uh, seeker profile page, yeah, really two pages, right? So actually, they are just like two super simple like React pages. Only because I was like familiar with React, uh, you guys probably use something else. That was super easy. Then um, matching them together, right, uh, was a combination of uh, scripts, and also matching them together was a combination of somewhere here. 
uh, some sort of backend we created. Uh, yeah, TypeScript. There was a very simple TypeScript engine that actually uh, still has tests on it, which was, I'm quite proud of that. So uh, we actually <laughs> managed to have a test, right, of like 40 plus test cases to make sure that the, uh, the test, the matching logic was correct. Because the matching logic was matching across like seven or eight different parameters and there was like quite a bit of logic there. So then we just wanted to make sure that it was matching correctly. So we kind of had that matching as well. What else can I talk about? Okay, WhatsApp was really here. So we actually did, uh, once the matching engine comes up, came up with a list of matches, uh, actually it just populated back into the Google Sheets and an intern will really just look at the short list and then just like copy paste and send the WhatsApp messages out. Actually, we made it easy for him. There was a script, right, that gave him the automated messages. So all he had to do was copy paste, copy paste. So he don't have to like type everything out. So we made it easy for him. Then, um, yeah, that's kind of what we had. Oh, and we did the hosting on Netlify, so we saved everything. Right, so this was what we did. Yeah. Okay, so uh, forward again, the final product that we did actually was like that. And we did all this, right, in less than two weeks. So the page itself, uh, there were two pages, uh, but I'm just showing you one. Uh, this is what we sent to our client. So uh, this is kind of what it was. So it was a simple page. There was an image of the person who, uh, this is a job seeker profile. Uh. So job seeker profile, he uploaded a picture. Uh, here it says like this person is a good match, so our matching algorithm did the matching, and then there was all the other parameters. Once you click on this, right, you can, uh, as a job hirer, I can click on this, and then uh, I can see the person's uh, WhatsApp directly. This was a later iteration. We could click on this, click on this, and directly talk to this person. So actually, it's possible to do all this. This is the if you know how Typeform looks like. This is what the Typeform is. So uh, we presented this to our job hire us, we ran a campaign uh, and they were actually going door to door and showing them uh, the brochure and telling them, hey, you know what, we, are, we have this new product uh, that is helping you to find um, uh, hire us, like blue collar, hey, sorry, hire us, blue, uh, blue collar workers, would you like to like register for it? So we showed them this and they were like, okay, this is interesting, can I register? And then immediately gave them an iPad and they registered for it. So yeah, it was pretty cool. We did all this in uh, less than two weeks. So it's, I think I was like super proud of the team. Uh, yep, and finally, right, I think the best part is that everyone loved it. So we made very good progress in just two weeks. So we had like more than 500 jobs posted. It's like, wow, amazing. You know, 2,000 plus job seekers registered. And pretty cool because we had like almost 5,000 job matches online. These are real job matches. So one to six. Uh, one candidate, right, got almost um, as much as uh, six vacancies. Now. So I'm just trying, trying to show you like what is the real like impact, right? We didn't build a perfect product. We know that what we could do, right, was to build a full job portal and then like do it all in like, like I don't know, like a full blown, super cool looking website. But we knew that, like, you know what, we just wanted to make sure that the client's objective was met, which is, is there a market? Do you think people will use it? Is this the right target market we're going for? So the moment we, we had that narrowed down, just launched the product, you know, we get the real results, we show it to them. And we didn't fake this number, these are all real, right? Okay, so, uh, yeah. And honestly, I think I didn't want to make this talk very long, so I just want to quickly just wrap this up with all this is only possible because of all this modern tooling. So I'm sure some of you have heard this, but if not, I'll just share one more time. So um, you guys have heard Airtable. So Airtable is a very good um, collaborative data store. It's great. You can put attachments, you can put, uh, you can do relationships, attachments. It actually has some referential integrity in there. So it's pretty cool. Okay, then um, all in one platforms like Netlify was a real lifesaver. You can do anything in there. CI, CD, hosting, serverless functions. In Dino as well. Anyone? Dino? Shout out. Okay, no, sad. Okay. Uh, analytics, um, like Heap is really good. If you guys haven't figured out, like, you know, you ask your product team, say, hey, what do you want to, what do you guys want to track? They said, I don't know. You know, then it doesn't matter. Just throw Heap in there. So Heap is a platform, right, where it's like Google Analytics, Google Analytics but better. You put the tracking code in there. It doesn't matter what you're tracking because you can go back in time later, right, to define what were those click actions, what, do, what they mean, and then you can analyze from there, right? So actually, this is pretty cool, uh, and it's free, so you just go ahead and use it. Um, if you guys are looking to like, have some sort of like NLP kind of experiences, there's something called we AI. I think it's free, if I'm not wrong. So I, one of the other projects we saw, they use this. Then um, you're on some web scripting platform that is really helpful. Yeah, but you guys know how to run scripts, I mean, yeah. You don't, need, you don't need Google scripts. You can run it no matter how you want. Right, so I think that really is all.
Okay, even if you forgot everything, there are just three key takeaways. So yeah, first one is always be accelerating your learning. You know, what are the, some of the small steps you can do to accelerate your learning? You know, sometimes you might not be able to do it by yourself. You can only accomplish this by talking to someone. So like for us, right, actually our team wasn't all entirely aligned on doing this experiment together. Uh, we needed someone to come in and like say, hey, should we just do it this way so that we can quickly find out what's happening in the market? You know, it was a one, two day conversation. You know, you get some buy-in, people say, okay, then we did it. Then we eventually accelerated and, you know, learned a lot. Now. So you might always do this, but you might have to talk someone into it. So yeah, as long as they're on the same page as you, that's great. Okay, second, what is the most minimal convincing experience? So if you guys are engineers and you're building things, maybe the next thing you want to consider about, you know, with your, with your conversation with uh, your product manager, you know, next Monday we're go back to work. And maybe there's been a long list of things that you guys are building. Maybe you can just ask them the question, hey, you know what, what's the minimum set of things that we can get away with? Maybe we can, instead of 10 stuff, maybe we can reprioritize and just build the three most important stuff, maybe? So that's one, you can get away with that. And then finally, the most important thing is always focus on getting that thing out of the door, right? Don't build like for the last five, six months, no one's seen it. If you can shorten the time, get it out there, put it outside, let people see it, give you some real feedback, you know, that'd be great. So this is the third takeaway. All right, and with that, I think I have no more slides. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, question. Okay, before, sorry, before questions, um, maybe i just like to draw your attention to the two amazing individuals behind me. Uh, one is Ariel. Ariel. <laughs> Ariel is, <laughs> without, without Ariel's support, right, we wouldn't have been able to make this whole thing happen. She was like organizing like all the food, getting people here. Yeah, all right, and um, next is Robin. Woo! Robin is uh, my coach here, and he's also the engineering director at BCG TV here. So um, three of us are here, happy to answer questions. Um, you know, later after this, you guys can you know hit us up, talk to us. I'm happy to take questions now as well. Anything? Okay. I'm just curious about the process. So what happens after the demo? So are you expecting to become more robust, bigger, or just like yeah, here's the? Good Do you want to join us to find out more? <laughs> 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 Robin, you're gonna say. Obviously, how much money have you got? How much money have you got? <laughs> okay, so um, we have. I can say two major phases, right? First phases usually is like innovation and validation. And then after that, um, it's what we call stage gated. We go back to the client and say, hey, you like our result? This is what we found out. If they say, mm, great, yeah, let's go to the next phase, then we have a long build uh, phase. So that's when engineers get a lot more involved. We start building out the entire big system, then you know we launch it. But still, it's also in like, like phases, like we won't like do a big bang. Usually it's, we have like alpha, beta, and all that stages. So we can slowly launch it out. Yeah. Okay. A kind of, yeah, exactly. Question. Robin, are we allowed to talk about failure stories? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, failure stories. Maybe before <laughs> my time. <laughs> you never want to remember them before my time. I don't remember, actually. Okay, I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell you, if that's all right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, um, please, please, please. Current yeah. Venture Month, we're building a shipping company, and we're exactly the same 